Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. Today on one of our Force Science episodes, we got for you some simple and not so simple, smart and stupid ways to increase both Ugga Duggas and Rip'ems from your impacts to die grinders and cutoff tools, and even something I worked on that may help to lose less at the trigger during your day to day, as we look at just how much power you're losing by using a particular air fitting, or how much there is to be gained by switching. Larger hose sizes with massive near 1 inch fittings that somehow thread into regular tools, running no fittings at all, using expansion buffer air tanks, and a new pre-production prototype Thor impact that's as air hungry as ever, so let's see what we can do to break some of the channel's records or break this tool in the process. This is your humble air fitting, specifically what we usually call automotive type, but also known as Truflate or Milton Letter Classification T. It's quarter inch NPT thread, and before we move on it's probably important to understand that when I say quarter, three eighths, half inch, while an air hose size, that might be actual inside diameter, but when I'm talking quarter inch taper thread, that thread size measures over half of an inch nominally, and half inch NPT measures damn near seven eighths of an inch. So just consider them names more than anything else. And yeah, just like with Imperial units, we gotta make things complicated in the US by having a whole bunch of these things, like this industrial Milton M style fitting, this Milton A Aero style, and aftermarket high flow fittings offered by many companies, but for the most part interchange with Milton high flow known as Milton V style. While measurements and CFM ratings are good and all, we wanna know if there really is any difference between these on your tools. So we're gonna dyno them and squeeze out as much watts, aka horsepower as we can out of each under the same setup, then see if that translates to an impact wrench and include things like custom larger 3 8 NPT fittings and couplers designed to thread into quarter inch NPT tools, and even massive fittings that you'd normally see on construction sites designed to thread into somewhat smaller tools. Plus high flow air swivels versus a new option on the market in the much requested air buffer tank to see if it moves the needle. Okay, enough yapping, we're gonna hit you sort of fast with these, so we're gonna do our best to keep you up to date on screen with what's going on any given time. Here's our air system we're usually running. We're gonna be running the air regulated down to 125 PSI since nearly all air systems out there can do that. And if you're watching this to get the most out of your tool, you've probably turned it up, we feel. Before each test, the compressor is run, so it starts at the same point each time. Here's the Milton T-type automotive fitting and matching coupler first. On a half horsepower chief die grinder, half horsepower being the above average size for an air tool, but still super common. Results will be even more dramatic between fittings on larger air tools and vice versa. All right, so first things first, we're gonna load this tool up to 250 watts, which is quite a lot, over one third horsepower, and see what kind of RPM it can maintain, which for this fitting looks to be 12,770 or 12.77K for ease of ranking on screen. Next, we'll see what kind of max watts it can maintain without stumbling down an RPM, basically the tool's power with this sort of air setup. It's able to power through the 260s and 270s without much issue. 280 watts is a bit of a load, but it can still keep RPM. 290 and 300 watts is a bit much. 285 is about as much as it's gonna handle for any length of time. Here's the Milton M industrial type. With a 250 watt load, it's about 12,600 RPM. So less, but super close on these two. And we also found midway between 280 and 290 watts is what it likes here, albeit at slightly less RPM in the process to that Type T automotive fitting. Here's the Type A Aero style. Just 12,430 RPM under load on this one, though again, not a huge difference like we're gonna be seeing coming up. And this one, while able to do 280 watts, was not too comfortable beyond that at 285 or 290, so 280 it is. All right, time for some aftermarket high flow air fittings. You'll find these from everyone, including Flexilla, Harbor Freight Merlin, and here the brand we could never forget, even if we try to DP or dynamic power. And the first thing you'll notice about DP is that as with other high performance hardware, this size is not gonna fit into everything. So it's gonna take some pre-game planning to know for sure what's going to work well here. For example, something this size will not fit into an A. It will only fit into a V because it was originally designed around working with a V, in fact. Let's see how it works using these two pieces designed for DP first. 
14,040 RPM. That's a difference you're gonna notice if it's your first time, for sure. And for watts, it cruises past the 280 and 290 watt range and can sustain 310 watts at about 11,900 RPM. Let's see how the actual steel Milton Type V fitting does. Nearly all aluminum high flow fittings are based off of this. 14,250 RPM now, that's the highest so far. At 300 watts or so, it is in the mid to low 12,000 RPM. Can't quite handle 320 watts, so 310 watts max it is. I find the trade-off is these sometimes dent on the opening, turning them into a D-shape and lowering their power without you knowing, or leaking air, or even in some cases shearing off like in air hammers, all aluminum brands and colors can do this. So the largest air fitting combo you can fit on this die grinder is actually something I've been curious about for a long time. There are custom high flow 3 8 NPT size fittings, but with quarter inch NPT threads to fit into regular tools. This way you might be able to enjoy a larger air fitting without having 3 8 NPT threads on the tool or stepping things down yourself in the threads. The downside being larger size overall and harder to push fittings in due to air pressure versus surface area acting against you, but the benefits? Looks like 13,450 RPM, an improvement, but not quite the one I was looking for. It appears the coupler itself is holding it back from besting the standard high flow V type. The watts it was able to put out back this up 300 watts and it couldn't sustain much further for long, just under the V type Milton high flow. All right, onto some more specialty questions like stepping up an air hose size, using an expansion buffer tank, threading the hose directly into the tool, and a triple air hose and air swivels as well. So we've done an episode on swivels before and found this Flexilla High Flow that uses a Milton V-type plug to perform the best, but also found its 45 degrees of angle a bit limiting. That's a lot of air hose stick out to deal with at awkward angles. So we looked up what NASCAR teams use and they use much bigger versions of this. This being just a quarter inch NPT one that you could fit in your tool and it's called a freedom swivel that uses sort of like a ball swivel joint. First off, here's how the Flexilla does versus an automotive T-type and high flow V-type fittings without swivels. 12,920 is quite good. That's higher than a regular fitting, though under max load, it can sustain what we saw to be 280 watts instead of 285. It couldn't hold 285, so still comparable to a non-swivel regular fitting, not too shabby. The Freedom Swivel, despite being $32 instead of $10 to $12, was a bit of a letdown making 12,850 RPM, which still isn't bad. It does offer much more orientation and makes the same 280 watts a few hundred less in the RPM than the Flexilla when tapped out. But I felt around a year ago when testing that Flexilla on impacts, it might be possible to do better. The degrees of freedom on a three-way air swivel seem to be hard to beat, but frankly, those all kind of suck. We saw a lot of losses on this design from Matco Harbor Freight, and here the Astro 3SB10. They're all about the same and they lose quite a bit of sauce. So I worked on a design and had Astro make some prototypes based on a 3 8 NPT body, three-way air swivel that ended up being a bit too bulky and eventually settled on this instead, which they just released, a billet CNC hardco anodized three-way that's one and a half times the overall size, but with ported out internals and additional flow holes to around two times the flow area size. The downside being cost, as it's 18 to $19 instead of 13, but it doesn't leak. We've had it on our parts washer blow gun for around five months, and I sent samples to Eric at South Main Auto to test, and he's been using them for the same period without issue as well. Of course, it made more impact beans when we were working on it, but over here at TTC, we didn't have any specific equipment to measure things like watts until now. This quote unquote, world's first high flow three-way air swivel makes a stout 13,600 RPM under load, which puts it above the regular fittings and just above the 3 8 custom fitting no swivel. That's pretty good. Obviously we knew this was gonna make more than most air fitting setups in general, otherwise it wouldn't have been greenlit, but above the 3 8 was a surprise. It also makes 300 watts with this setup, similar RPM to the 3 8 fitting no swivel after the same runtime. Okay, let's get a bit more creative. Many of you have asked about using an expansion tank to act as a buffer reinforcement of volume close to the tool, acting in some ways as an air system capacitor for sagging air delivery. 
This Harbor Freight example is a cheap test case to help answer some questions. This thing comes with half inch NPT, which is massive threads, but its fittings only feature about an eighth inch hole. So hope you don't need to air up in a hurry when using this thing remotely. We're swapping in some free flowing half inch NPT thread fittings connecting directly to various hose sizes as needed. Now we've mentioned in the past having issues keeping 90 PSI while running in three quarter inch impacts, even with an 80 gallon tank and half inch hose running directly from the wall pipe into the gun. So maybe this will enable us to start testing full size three quarter inch air guns versus their specs on the box. With the 11 gallon air tank added near the tool and half inch air line feeding that tank with half inch NPT threads, the die grinder on a 3 8 line reaches 14,750 RPM. After some testing, we find this thing makes now 315 watts, and that's about as much as it will do. 330 was far too much, and 320 would make it fall a bit quick in RPM. Doesn't quite seem like enough of a bump to faithfully start testing full size 3 quarter inch impacts, but another thing we were curious about is threading that 3 8 air hose just directly into the tool, no fitting, no coupler. Not the most convenient, the tool's sort of paired with the hose permanently now until you depressurize everything, and it's seeing 14,380 RPM, the second most so far. Though when we switched to maxing this tool out, we were able to sustain 320 watts like nothing had before, that 11K RPM being quite healthy but couldn't handle 330 watts which means under max flow, this does see an advantage over an 11 gallon capacitor tank. That's pretty cool. All right, last up to take on these is a half inch airline. This uses half inch NPT threads with 3 8 NPT fittings, basically how we test large air hammers and stuff like that that suggest half inch airlines. 14,900 RPM, certainly the best so far. At max load, it did about exactly as the 3 8 line threaded into the tool does, 320 watts, same RPM arc as well. So with those in the books, on to impact Ugga Duggas and some massive nearly one inch air fittings as well, which we're in no way going to thread into that die grinder. Maybe kind of stupid ideas like routing airlines from around the shop in different bays, all into the same tool. For all that, we'll be using this, a prototype three quarter inch version of the Thor Impact at the top of our half inch ranking. This includes a lot of changes requested by us and a lot from you guys and users out there. A new wider grip that will allow for a larger internal passageway to fit a trigger tilt valve. So gone is the two stage trigger and allows for more air to pass through and eliminates the roll pin hole that was here where air could at times weep out in cases that we've heard. This hump is now gone, so more comfortable to hold. And you'll notice that this webbing on the back is a lot shallower now from using an even larger air motor inside. That's about as much as I know right now. Ideally, there would be a half inch more powerful version as well. And some of these changes being seen on the 1894 Thor as well. No promises, but basically my job is to try to kill these things. So let's try that. A very real downside of three quarter inch air impacts is how much air they use. As mentioned earlier, even our 80 gallon top of the line IR doesn't keep up with some models. So likely you aren't seeing the best from yours either unless you're in a large equipment diesel shop running three quarter inch airlines or something like that. Which meant cordless is just lately better. You don't have to worry about any of that. So this overall size being based on a half inch tries to get around that reality and allow people at home or regular tire shops using three eighths and half inch lines to see that power. Which as we're seeing here, using the tank still with regular shop fittings and three eighths hose is about 830 foot pounds or so at 125 PSI static pressure more than we saw with a half inch Thor and 150 PSI on high flow fittings. So looking pretty good already. Let's get into some higher flow with the three eighths fittings that have quarter inch NPT thread. This tool can take either quarter inch or three eighths NPT into it. Eight hundred fifty-four foot-pounds, so an increase, but likely not much of a noticeable one. Here's with a Milton V high flow with the three-eighths line. Eight hundred and eighty-seven foot-pounds. That is a nice jump, especially compared to those standard fittings down there. Now let's see how much of loss we get just from removing that buffer tank that we've been using.
867, still above the custom 3 8 type fittings, so likely not our solution for running larger body size 3 quarter inch air guns, but may help you to see this kind of performance with your 20 gallon or under setups at home. And now for some nonsense. This three-way Merlin splitter is designed to split one airline into three locations, but we instead we're going to swap it around and feed three airlines into one tool from two separate air sources with a buffer tank into the tool. Just to see what it can do, probably little of no use to you learning this, but it's fun. Nine hundred and twenty five foot pounds first air gun into the 900s on this channel and we're noticing these gains on higher flowing stuff at the end which makes sense line pressure is the same so shouldn't see an early jump just after some ugga duggas with the system getting sort of winded and finally in fittings I know there's been a lot of them <laughs> we have custom ones like the 3 8 that thread down to a quarter inch but these are half inch NPT body size fittings that usually have threads that measure over 7 eighths of an inch nominally, these thread into 3 8 NPT tools, which this impact happens to have. So we got a 25 foot half inch air hose with giant half inch NPT coupler on this without the expansion tank so that we can also reach 150 PSI. On screen, we got both the 150 PSI and 125 PSI normal setup to compare to the others on screen. Nine hundred and eighty five foot pounds and even the one hundred and twenty five PSI one to compare to the others nine hundred and thirty nine beating out the triple air hose abomination which goes to show you it's all about the weakest link in your restriction on the line not all about air source entirely. So as we see on screen how the two best air swivels do versus standard and high flow fittings another question we often get is about air tool oil. Yes you should use it but how much is to be gained. Eh, it's hard to say. We brought in our own very used 2135 Ti Max gun that hadn't been oiled in several years, maybe a decade, and it made almost no difference before and after. Other times we see as much as 10%, just depends on what's going inside the gun at the moment, I guess. That new 3SB40 three-way air swivel, gotta say, we haven't found anything that touches it yet. Then again, I'm terribly biased I came up with the idea, not that it takes a rocket surgeon to suggest we poured out some holes. Appreciate you joining us. We'll leave links to the pieces that work best for us in the testing below. And thanks for watching.